Hi, I'm Jessica, and when I'm not drinking all the coffee, watching Razorback sports, or hanging out with my family of boys, it's my passion to help elementary music teachers just like you find your unique teaching style. My goal with this podcast is to share helpful tips, strategies, and to give you the motivation you need to gain momentum in your teaching so you can continue being the music teacher rock star you already are. Today, I want to talk about how to teach music in a low-income school. Right out of college, my very first teaching job, I graduated in December, and I got a teaching job in the middle of the school year. And it was at a low-income elementary school that was in the inner city. Not only that, this school hadn't had a music program for seven years. I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? (laughs) Ironically, this was a passion of mine, and I knew that I had always had a desire to work in with low-income schools in work at a school that hadn't had a music program for a while. So it's kind of ironic that that's the only school that opened up. And if you're a person of faith, I don't find that ironic. I find that a God thing, to be honest. And so here's, I'm going to share my experience and then tell you a little bit about what worked for me. And like I said, this is my story. So I'm not here to offend anyone and I'm not stereotyping um, inner city schools at all. I'm just giving the experience of my story at my school and what worked for me. And hopefully this can help you also if you have the same um, experience. So teaching music in a low-income school. Honestly, a lot of it is not that much different than teaching at any other school. You're still teaching kids. You're still teaching them music. You still have objectives you have to meet. You still have programs to perform. You still have instruments to play, songs to sing. But like I said, my experience walking in this classroom, I had no instruments. I had no teaching materials or resources. And so I knew, okay, first of all, I have to have these kids, they have to, first of all, gain my trust, or have to gain their trust, I should say. They have to get to know me, and I need to practice procedures, even though it's in the middle of the school year. They need to know what I expect in here because they haven't had music in a while and so they don't know or some of them ever actually because it had been seven years um and so they needed to know what was going to be happening in the music classroom and then all okay so then on top of that I knew okay my principal who just hired me told me I have no budget I knew I had nothing really to work with except for some old textbooks from 1995 you guys oh my gosh And so the kids, um, (coughs) excuse me, goodness. So what I did was I got the kids, we did the procedures, we did the classroom management, and then we just, that whole four or five months, so that was January, January through May, we did singing, body percussion, and movement. And that was awesome. It was basically awesome honestly, a kind of a blessing in disguise because it was basically introducing these kids to music without the complication of using instruments. Then when I got to add those, I actually used my own money that summer and bought just a few, you know, even we just kind of took turns and traded. And then each year I built up more and more. And I especially worked on finding teaching resources, which I enjoy sharing my experiences and my resources. But Um, So, like I said, we basically sang, did body percussion and movement. And so the first thing I want to tell you is do what works. What I mean by that is, just like I did, you're going to try out lessons and they're not going to work. That goes for any music teacher, you guys. Sometimes you think, oh my gosh, I'm planning the best lesson in the whole entire world. Um, This is just going to go over so well. And then it doesn't. It's a total bomb. The kids don't care. They don't understand what you're teaching. You've maybe made it too complicated. I always noticed that the easiest lessons always went over the best. The ones that I thought, well, this isn't going to work. They're not going to like this. And then they ended up loving it. So don't overcomplicate it. What I mean by do what works is you're going to notice that you're going to be at music teaching workshops and Maybe it's even with your school district. And you're going to be around a lot of other music teachers who, even stepping into their classrooms, because I know a lot of them host workshops um, in their classrooms, and you're going to see how many things they have, 
how many teaching materials they have, how many instruments, and you're going to feel overwhelmed and totally underqualified. Don't. Can I just tell you right now, stop it. Stop it right now and don't feel that way. <laughs> when I, what I mean by do what works is you are your student's teacher, okay? You know these kids, maybe not right away, like I said, if you're new, but you will get to know them better than anyone. Not better than anyone, but better than any other music teacher is what I mean. They don't know your students like you do. So you need to do what works for you. If you see a classroom that's really Kodai focused and you try the Kodai method and you just don't feel like it's your style of teaching, then don't do it. If you feel like you've tried ORF and you don't understand it, you maybe want to get a little more training first, then don't do it. Like I said, start off small. Do what works. Start off with singing, body percussion, movement, okay? But you can always go back to the drawing board and find what works. Some things I noticed, too, that work in certain schools don't work in an inner city or low-income school. The kids don't always understand about folk songs, and they don't always understand ORF, and they don't understand you wanting to do solfege. I'm not saying they won't get there, and it may happen, but not immediately, okay? First thing you need to do is figure out what music they like. Meet them where they're at. Gain their trust. I'm not talking about playing songs in your classroom with inappropriate language. Of course not. But you can always figure out what they like and meet them where they're at, and they will trust you. They will, you know, they're like, oh, she can relate to me. So I mentioned gaining their trust. Okay, so what I mean by that is a lot of the kids will push back against any new adult coming into their life at a low-income school. Oh, man, a lot of these kids have so many issues that I can't even explain to you. And like I said, I'm talking about my own experience here. I had students come to school where, you know, a single mom home and they their mom worked nights. And so they would be the one getting their little brother and sister up for school and onto the bus every morning. Um, some would come to school talking about drive-by shootings they heard outside their window the night before. Um, some had parents that were in jail and they were living with grandparents. I, there were a lot of grandparents raising their um, grandkids at my school. I knew I needed to gain these kids trust. And so um, the, a way to do that is, like I said, showing them love, use humor, make sure you slowly tear the walls down where they feel like they can talk to you. The more they trust you and know you, and the more they see that you are not just another adult who's going to abandon them or leave them or they're not sure who you are really, the more they'll open up and really want to do what you're teaching them. So don't don't feel bad if right away it doesn't happen. Maybe focus at first on forming a relationship with these kids and not so much on how are you going to teach all the curriculum, if that makes sense. So then I, like I said, I didn't have a lot of instrument. Well, I had no instruments for a while and no teaching materials. So teach with what you have. Okay. If you have, um, I don't know, like outdated books, music curriculum books, but you don't necessarily, maybe your teaching style isn't to have the kids sit on the floor and read the books, but you would like to maybe, you can always pull songs from those books to use. You're like, okay, oh, this is a good song. And this is maybe in the music curriculum nowadays. Um, use songs from there. there you're always going to find some good poems to use in there there's actually some good lesson plans and games suggestions in these old curriculum books um that's all i had to go on um at first and so then also maybe you you have like maybe two rhythm instruments to have the kids share them they're gonna love it if that's all you have bring in some buckets those can be your drums for a while Make instruments. The kids love to make instruments. Get a plastic water bottle and put some corn in it, corn kernels, kernels, and then they can shake them like, you know, shakers. And just be creative for a while. And don't beat yourself up if you do not have instruments right away. Don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle, okay? Some of these music teachers have been teaching for so long, and so they've had the opportunity to build their classroom up. If you're somewhere that only has a few resources or nothing to work with, it's okay. Just start with what you have. Bring real-world experiences to these kiddos. Now, your school, if it's low-income, 
probably doesn't have much of a budget, okay? L let's just be honest. And honestly, and I hate to say this, but it's the truth. <laughs> music teachers sometimes are the low, low end, or at the low end of the totem pole, meaning there might be a teeny tiny bit of field trip budget. And who's it going to go to first? More than likely, it'll go to the classroom teachers, okay? So let's say um, after a few years of teaching, I had a fourth and fifth grade honor choir. I really had a desire to bring them out to sing at airports, um, no, the airport, our local airport, and then a bank and then other places, you know, um, that were around our school. We had no budget to get these kids a bus. And so for a while, all my students, I brought the experiences to them. Like there's always orchestra websites where you can have the kids watch a real live orchestra performance. Um, or choir, or singing, or anything, any kind of Fantasia video actually is fantastic. It's, they can listen to the music, but also watch it kind of come to life, like with art. So bring experiences to them if you cannot afford to bring them somewhere at first. And then some days, my last point is, you don't have to teach music. What I mean by that is, like I mentioned earlier, your kids will come to school sometimes with just a whole lot of issues. And for some reason, I always notice it's just certain days. I don't know if it's the weather pattern or what's going on that day, but there's some days the kids can just not focus or some of them are dealing with a lot that day or it's just not happening. And so if that day you just need to play a game of freeze dance or you need to just play music and have them write about what they're thinking about, um, and maybe later you can turn that writing into a song even, it's okay to sometimes change your lesson plan up and not teach the music lesson you had planned, be okay with changing it up as, you know, things come. It's okay. It's okay if it doesn't go exactly as planned. My type A personality sometimes couldn't handle that, and I really wanted it to go exactly how I planned all week, and it didn't, and that's okay. I hope you got um, something from this, and in the show notes, I'll include the link to printable that should be able to help you in your classroom. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for listening in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, I would love for you to review the show and leave a rating on iTunes. To find out more about how I can help you gain momentum in your elementary music teaching career, head to the domesticmusician.com where you'll find free downloads, courses, the blog, and so much more. Continue teaching music and never doubt the impact you're making each and every day in the lives of your students.